Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel Dentistry to the Point. Myself, Dr. Drumil Manik. So today we'll start with our second topic from the viral diseases of the oral cavity. So today's topic will be herpangina. Starting with the introduction, herpangina is a specific viral infection. What it is? It is a specific viral infection which was discovered or described by Zoraski in 19. 20. Who described this? Zoraski had described this in 1920 and later he only named this disease as herpangina. There were various studies conducted and they found out that Coxsackie group A virus, right? Which is the virus responsible? Coxsackie group A virus responsible for the occurrence of herpangina. There are various strains of Coxsackie group A that is 1, 6, 8, 10, 16 and 2, right? So these are the most common strains of Coxsackie group A virus which are responsible. Mainly this Coxsackie group A virus, it is an enterovirus. What it is? It is an enterovirus or you can call it a single stranded RNA virus which will look somewhat like this. In the microscopic section, we are not going to discuss much about the microbiology part. So whenever a patient or a person is affected by herpangina, you will find this fluid filled vesicles in the oral cavity, right? Later, what will happen to this fluid filled vesicles, we'll discuss in the further part of this video. What about the transmission? The transmission of this disease is mainly due to direct contact with the virus or the affected person, right? So whenever a person is going to have direct contact, there are more chances that he is going to get affected by this disease and mainly immunocompromised persons are also at target. So moving on to the clinical features of herpangina, mostly young children are affected, right? Older children and adults are rarely affected, but mostly we can say that young children are at higher risk of this disease, right? It is also known as common summer disease because the children or the young children who are at higher risk develop this disease in this season only that is common summer diseases right next moving on to some of the most common clinical features right so the disease is not going to directly start as vesicle first there are going to be some clinical features which are going to initially appear and then you will see vesicle formation so starting with the first clinical feature patient will have sore throat that you can also call it as enlarged tonsils he will have cough rhinorrhea low grade fever and headache, vomiting, prostration and abdominal pain. So these are the most common initial signs or you can say symptoms of herpangina. The incubation period, I hope you guys know the meaning of incubation period. From the starting point of the day where the patient is going to get exposed to the virus till the time of appearance of clinical features is known as an incubation period right so the incubation period is 2 to 10 days for viruses or diseases like herpangina next patients soon will exhibit small vesicles as i said that we previously discussed about some clinical features after which the patient is going to exhibit small vesicles which will again rupture this is the same thing which we saw in herpes simplex also there was formation of fluid filled vesicles which were going to rupture and form ulcers these vesicles are going to get converted into ulcers which will be represented as see these are the first vesicle formation fluid filled vesicles which will get converted into an ulcer somewhat like this i didn't get an exact image of palatal area but yeah you can relate it with this the ulcer are going to appear as gray base the base of the ulcer you can see in the center that is a gray base and inflamed periphery the periphery is going to appear reddish and central gray base mainly this ulcer will be seen on the anterior fascial pillars right so these are your anterior fascial pillars on the side of uvula and along with that the vesicles or ulcers may also be seen on other sides like hard palate soft palate posterior pharyngeal wall buccal mucosa and Tongue, right so these are the various side but most common you need to remember is anterior fascial pillars right the ulcers do not tend to be extremely painful what is it saying the ulcer are not extremely painful but yeah some white sometimes dysphagia may occur dysphagia is known as difficulty in swallowing right so patient may have difficulty in swallowing or some disturbance due to this vesicles or ulcers 
the systemic symptoms which have occurred are going to resolve within few days at last the healing is going to occur within 7 to 10 days of starting of clinical features next children have been affected several times in one season as i said this is a summer disease so in single season the children are affected several times but yet permanent immunity is not developed sometimes the patient might have developed the permanent immunity but yes the virus is going to reside in the body for one to two months and then the neutralizing antibodies against these various strains are going to develop rapidly so first the children will not have immunity eventually he will develop a permanent immunity as he grows or his age increases to various strains of coxsackie viruses next laboratory findings so the coxsackie virus can be isolated from suckling mice or hamsters right so you can just uh, isolate the virus in a suckling mice or hamster by scraping of the lesions in patient any of the patient who is having lesions in throat or in palatal area or facial pillars might be that lesions are going to be scraped and then these viruses are going to be inoculated in mice right there will be control group and case group so on the left side of the image this is the control group of mice and this is the case group so what will happen eventually there will be loss of skeletal muscles right the skeletal muscles are going to lose or they are going to get distracted and followed by death of the mice but the control group which was not given any virus is still alive right so we can see that it is leading to destruction of skeletal muscles followed by death in mice so this is the inoculation of virus into the mice or you can say the laboratory findings even the, the clinical signs and symptoms are also somewhat similar to that we see that is vesicle or ulcer formation even after the disappearance of clinical manifestation of the disease in the human patient the virus may still be isolated from him or her for one to two months maine kya kaha tha ki whenever the disease is gone or clinical manifestations have reduced but you can still isolate the virus from the body still till one to two months lastly no necessary treatment is required but yeah the symptoms might disappear as it is a self limiting disease and presents few complication that may also subside in one week or 10 days right there are some complications of herpengina like parotitis meningitis hemolytic anemia or hemorrhagic diathesis so these are some of the complications which have been seen in various cases of herpengina but it is not necessary that each and every case of herpengina might have parotitis meningitis hemolytic anemia or hemorrhagic diathesis so last uh, lastly before ending with this topic i would like to go to a quick revision of herpengina so firstly introduction it was given by zerowski it is a coxsackie group of virus which is a single stranded rna virus leads to vesicle formation exposed through direct contact or immunocompromised person affecting mainly young children and older children and adults are affected rarely it is also known as common summer disease these are the initial clinical features like sore throat cough fever vomiting abdominal pain these are the most common initial features then you have incubation period of 2 to 10 days moving on with further we have vesicle formation which will rupture and lead to formation of ulcer in anterior facial pillars along with that you will have various other sites like hard palate soft palate posterior pharyngeal wall buccal mucosa and tongue these ulcers or vesicles are not painful but sometimes they might cause difficulty in swallowing which might lead to healing of this ulcer in 7 to 10 days children have been affected several times but immunity will develop rapidly as the age progresses coxsacky virus can be isolated we have discussed about this you need to scrape the lesion and inoculate the virus you will see the clinical features leading to destruction of skeletal muscle and death lastly no treatment is required but with this you need not forget some of the complications like parotitis meningitis hemolytic anemia and hemorrhagic diathesis so this is of uh, end of herpengina i hope you guys have understood what is the disease and what is the etiology clinical features and laboratory findings right i hope you guys enjoyed the video 
so at last thank you for your kind attention for 10 to 15 minutes at last don't forget to like share and subscribe our channel if you enjoyed the content thank you